I'm Bishop Mosher, and this is Mr. Cole. Um, we are co-teaching biostats. Uh, we're at Godwin High School, a uh, classroom located in the Specialty Center, and uh, we're going to be condensing our three months project that we've been working on, uh, which was a quantitative study of perception of COVID-19 in our student population in a 15-minute window. So everybody buckle up because it's going to be quick. Um, Mr. Cole is going to kind of take us through just as a recap of what we have been doing. So for the for the film crew, and then we're going to get into what you guys are going to be doing today. Mr. Cole. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Uh, just a quick look at our agenda. We know we've been working on our first draft of this paper you're writing, our research paper, as if we were going to publish, pretending we are professionals here. Practicing be professionals. We did look at some data yesterday for uh, your edits after we get to uh, the primary event for the next couple of days, which will be your peer review, just like we have in that uh, academic professional setting, research professional setting here. So let's take a look at what it is uh, that we've been doing. So I feel like it's good to have a recap. If you're going to be going through uh, your peers' papers and editing, that you have that right mind frame uh, to remember all the things that we have done. So earlier in the year, we did have a section where we were talking about bias in the media, uh, especially the uses of language, um, and particularly in reference to uh, COVID-19. We were seeing a lot of different articles, and now changing just a few words could change the entire perception uh, that someone gets from that particular article. Uh, we also looked at a very interesting scatter plot that kind of motivated us uh, to this investigation here, that microbe scope, where we were looking at several different infectious diseases uh, relative to several different variables, uh, two in particular, uh, we actually chose to investigate here at God. So contagiousness uh, related to, in our scatter plot, that was R0. So the base level number of individuals we can expect someone to infect uh, if they had a particular disease. And then the deadliness, the case fatality rate. Should you contract that disease, what is the chance of unfortunately dying from that disease? We developed our research question. We've kind of created a few questions around that since. But the general question was, what is the perception of COVID-19 here uh, at Godwin? What do the students believe is true? And we were going to try to compare that to some legitimate data that we could find out there from reputable sources and make the comparison too. So we started working on survey questions. What were we actually going to ask? We talked about wording bias, creating simple questions, neutrally worded questions, uh, and questions effective to get a response about contagiousness. Ultimately, we decided to change that R0 to the RT value. So under current conditions was our question. So now that we have mitigation strategies, uh, how many people might we expect an individual to infect should they have had contracted COVID-19? A little bit different than that initial number from R0 we saw on the scatter plot, but uh, we felt that was a better measure now. And then deadliness, the case fatality rate, those contracting COVID-19, what percentage uh, are dying from that? Then we talked about the methodology, how we're actually going to administer the survey. We wanted to keep anonymity, if at all possible. So we had lots of interesting discussion about how we were going to get some anonymous uh, responses. Uh, then the sample itself. So how are we going to uh, acquire the sample? And we thought just a simple random sample would be good. Uh, administration helped us select those students from the Godwin population randomly. Um, and then also, pop, uh, sorry, sample size which was important. We were given some um, thinking ahead to the tests we were going to perform, the analysis we were going to perform, and if we had a certain sample size, we'd be able to run a certain test. Ultimately, we found out uh, that our plan of sampling more than we needed to still did not end up with the sample size. But no worries. Uh, we've had some good statisticians out there with methodologies that we were able to use even with a smaller sample size than we had hoped uh, to get. Uh, we then kind of added on to our investigation we started to wonder if we asked people in person versus we asked online, would those responses be different? And we do have a way that we could test for that. So uh, that was sort of an extra component to the study that we had as we were coming up with methodology here. Uh, and sometimes, of course, that's how uh, research goes. Then we created our interview script uh, in Hall Pass with the help of everyone in here uh, doing all of these things here, uh, having a say. Uh, we then had a couple of extra survey questions when we were creating survey questions in general. Uh, we did have a lot of questions coming from you all about uh, mask usage from uh, Godwin students and then what are the news sources they are getting their information from. 
uh, if any at all. Uh, the methods write up followed that. So we wanted to make sure that we were firm on the methods so that we could have that survey administered appropriately. Uh, we got our data, started doing our data analysis, and we run really two main tests. We did the sign test for the in-person. Remember, in-person is kind of our main group that we're talking about, hoping that they are representative of the Godwin population at large. And that's what we were comparing against those true values uh, we were able to find as close as possible to the date of that survey administration. Uh, and then we followed up with that extra piece we added on to our investigation here. Um, were those responses different if we gave them in person or online? So we gathered those data and tested to see if those responses were different. Uh, keep in mind that that test for differences is n not in any way connected to the true values uh, from the data sources that we found. We are only testing if they were different, right? irrespective of what the true value actually is here. Um, and then as of course recently you finished your first draft, which we'll be looking at today in our uh, peer review. So let's talk a little bit about that paper itself, get in the mind frame for this peer review we're about to have. You guys recall at the beginning of the year, some of you have had a lot of experience with writing research papers through the center, some of you have not. And we went through the basic concepts of uh, research paper construction and what some of the stylistic things are of, of value. Um, and remember, when you guys are writing this stuff, there is no hard manual that says do this, do that. Uh, a lot of it is just the development of your own personal style based on uh, sort of trends that we see in people that do this professionally. So you guys have already taken a, uh, you know, a shot at this first draft, and we're going to get the opportunity to hand those out within uh, the classroom to peer review. So we want to just review a couple of things here about stuff that you guys should be looking at while you're reading and evaluating the rest of the uh, class's papers. So a um, couple of things, and remember we're talking about guidelines. We're not necessarily talking about hard truths here. So some of, of what you guys are gonna do with evaluation of these papers is really going to be your opinion, how you perceive it, um, how what, what sort of readability is there for it. Um, so we're trying to provide honest, constructive feedback, not just pick, 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 but honest, constructive feedback, because oftentimes as we're reading it for ourselves, we're not seeing, uh, we're not seeing some of the flaws in the paper in our own writing. Um, so some of the things that we need to make sure that we're doing is not overwhelming uh, our readers with extraneous sort of variables. Uh, Rini, I'm gonna pick on you for a second. I gotta, I gotta jump there out of you. Um, so when you guys were sort of constructing the initial draft, I was walking around and I heard uh, Rini uh, talking about a particular line that she wanted to use where I think the line, if I remember correctly, was uh, something like COVID-19 has many world implications. And uh, is that correct? Is that about, about right? And, and I asked her, um, you know, are we going to define what many, what many is? And are we going to find what implications are? So a lot of times in, in writing for English and history, we have the, this, this tendency to sort of set things up. Um, in our scientific writing, we want to make sure that we're having purpose with what we're putting out there. And if we're unwilling to say what many means quanti uh, quantitatively or what, what those implications actually are, then we don't want to just leave it up to the reader to assume what those things might be or to make them up for, their, for, them, for themselves. So in other words, we want to make sure that we are just being concise and being clear and uh, not putting things in the paper that are not of merit to the actual findings in the study. Make sense? Yes? Okay. Um, obviously, we, we talked about toggling back and forth between different voice structures in the paper. Uh, largely, we want to use active voice. When we get to the method section, we're talking more about uh, passive voice. Um, and we'll kind of work, work through a couple of these to talk about basic trends and methods and, and intro. Um, a lot of you, and I don't know if this will happen in this, but um, when you guys were freshmen writing research papers, we oftentimes would have these specific paragraphs in our introduction that said, the independent variable in this experiment was, the dependent variable in this experiment was. Those things, if you guys read actual peer-reviewed published literature, you will not find those in those papers. So as you are reading and evaluating your peers' paper, 
you know, if those things are finding their way into the introduction, um, you know, ask through your through your critique. Is this necessary? Can I just imply it? Um, can I figure out what the independent variable is implied through the, the writing versus having to have it actually spelled out for me? So these are kind of constructive things that you guys can look through. Um, obviously, if we're going to have various paragraphs, we want those things to flow from one idea to the next. We want to try to separate our ideas and our topics in those uh, paragraphs to try to not confuse or stray us away from what the research is actually telling us. And one that Mr. Cole might have some extra commentary on here, remember that word significant. Um, it's a great adjective, but it, it has very specific meaning in a, a paper that is based on statistical findings. So um, if we are going to use that word in a research paper, we want to make sure that we are uh, reserving that to numeric findings. The other thing that you might see, and I don't recall exactly what our p-values were, um, but they were, they were lower. Some, um, we had one very small. Yeah, so there is sometimes the tendency for people to say, oh, well, it, was, it was a really low p-value. So it was very significant. Um, I personally like to stay away from, from that, just like the many world implications. Um, Mr. Cole may have a different take on that. You want to chime in on that one or no? Uh, I think you got it right, Mr. Bosher. So we don't need to qualify significance. It is significant or it's not. Your alpha value, that significance level, is really what is determining the strength of your evidence. So not qualifying. It was significantly different. It was not significantly different. Reporting that p-value compared to your alpha. Straight, simple, concise to the point. Yep. So uh, we're going to transition here to these parts. Remember, intro, very simple. We want it to read like an upside down pyramid. We're starting with broad and getting down to the fine point of the question, the hypothesis that we are actually exploring. Methods, we spent a lot of time pining over these methods. And uh, so you guys have seen this over and over again. But let's make sure that what we actually uh, talked about in our group is being able to be repeated. But let's leave out some of the extraneous stuff like Mr. Cole's room or Mr. Bosher's room that doesn't really have context um, for anyone who may be reading that outside of our group. Okay? Um, so you guys are going to get a chance to, to look through those. I think Mr. Cole wanted to say some things specific about results. Um, and then we're going to start handing out papers for you guys. So uh, we did our analysis together, uh, but we didn't really talk about how we want to write that up in the results section. and. Um, Speaking of Mr. Bosher, I think one of the things that we anticipated, if anything, was that we might overdevelop that results section. So this is really just very simple, straightforward. This is what we got. This is what we got. This is what we got. So we have that discussion conclusion where you will start to talk about what that actually means, your interpretation of that, implications of that. So our results, uh, past tense, we want to state all the findings. So even things that were not significant. We do want to report that as well. It makes your paper seem more legitimate. You're not just uh, promoting those significant results. Uh, you got your data tables, graphs. Make sure you've got some figure legends on those, as we talked about earlier in the year. Um, you might have tossed those in the appendix, and you're just referring to them in the results. You could also have them in the results. Again, it's kind of up to you as far as how you feel the paper reads. Is it crowding that section? Or does it seem to, we can move that down to the appendix and just refer to it to clean it up a little bit more. Uh, we would include some descriptive statistics. Uh, some of y'all had already done that. And again, we started looking at that data yesterday. So that might be more that you put in in your final edit uh, about the proportion of students that uh, say we need to wear one mask, two masks, no mask at all. Uh, their news sources. And then the inferential statistics is what we really did uh, here together. So all we're going to do is make a simple statement about the test results. Remember, we're not proving anything. All we're doing is supporting or not supporting the hypotheses that we have. And I'm going to jump uh, to the next slide quickly just to give you uh, a couple of straightforward sentences of how we might write that in the results. So when we were comparing those two groups, the online and the in-person, uh, the formats for the survey, we were just testing to see was there a difference in responses. And so we might say something like a man Whitney test was performed to determine whether there was a difference in responses for the in-person and online survey formats. The perceived contagiousness responses for in-person, and we will give a slight 
amount of descriptive stats, so what was the sample size, a median. When we looked at that data, it was a skewed distribution, so median, a better, better measure of center than the mean. And then the online, same thing. Uh, we were not significantly different. Report that U statistic, p-value, and if we're not statistically different, of course that p-value would be greater than your alpha. Not writing alpha, of course, inserting your specific value uh, of alpha. So that's all we would need to say in the results. Then you will carry on to that discussion conclusion portion to actually talk about what that means. Nice. You guys have any questions about any of this? This is good. No? Uh, would it be helpful to leave that, uh, yeah. that, that uh, statement, result statement up there for you guys to kind of take through? Okay, so we'll, once he's getting done uh, with that, we'll throw that back up there. Um, but if no questions, remember what you guys are doing. We have uh, hard copies of the first draft. So each pair of you are going to get one copy of the paper. Um, so you guys can start reading through and making marks. Um, remember, we're not having vendettas against our, our, our uh, scientific peers here. We're making constructive comments. So you guys have time to do this. Let's make sure that we're, you know, a lot. A tendency is to, when we look at lots and lots of papers, we do a lot of shorthand commentary. You guys just have one. So make sure that the commentary you're making on these papers are worthwhile and clear and spelled out as to what you think should be done. Okay? So, recently there's been a spike of COVID-19 cases and the region has better understanding of knowledge of this disease. This experiment was designed to evaluate the educators. Shouldn't this be all cat? Can we pen it? Yeah, no, we can pen it because that's like a search. And for reference, we're just going to keep up. That results. This is the this is the slide we won, correct? Or the more general slide? I think that's the one. That's the one. Have a result. Very simple, straightforward. Declare the statement. Okay. Okay. I feel like all the best ones should be. Maybe I'll include this. I think it has the result of many factors in person with COVID very person person. I feel like purpose should be for the deal. That could be, uh, that could be uh, an inaccuracy right there. It could be. Like, but because no, no one's like fact checked it. Okay. Due to the novelty of the virus, the more studies are being done, quicker infection rate early on in the media, especially with COVID-19, sometimes by improper contact. This is the one that's in the room there about. I don't remember some of us are more familiar than others with the two. What's that? 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 What's Oh wait, wait, sorry, this is the computer. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And then also, I mean, it just doesn't feel, I don't know. Well, no, like, lockdown this, like, is stark, frequent. Uh, no, we need to get rid of feel um, a little too this, because you know? this is kind of formulaic. What is formulaic? The the per they just said the purpose oh, of this okay. experiment. I'll, I'll do this. Yeah. I personally think that the... Yeah. And then the, the, the results from this study. Oh, it's the measure. It's the measure. Okay. So, I don't know. I disagree with that. Yeah, because it's not misinformation. So I don't wait really the levels up here. I was going to say the independent variable of this experiment is the method. method of. Hey, thanks for taking a look in at uh, biostatistics here at Godwin High School. Any questions on our Man Whitney test?